Today I will share with you my top 5 most essential tools to make games in Unity. For each of them, I will show you some of my favorite features, and at the end of the video, I will demonstrate how we can combine all these assets to create amazing synergies. Let's get started. At number 1, we have DoTwin. If you know this asset, you know why it's first on the list. If you don't, I suggest you get it right after watching this video. DoTwin is an incredible asset that lets you do a lot of things with very little code. Let me show you. For example, let's say we want to move this monkey to a banana. We can simply write transform.doMove, pass in a destination and a duration. You can also rotate and do many other things. One that I use a lot is do jump. Simply define the jump height and the number of jumps, and that's it. Of course, these are the basic settings, and you can customize it easily and change the animation ease mode depending on your needs. One powerful feature is that you can create a sequence of twins. If you want to rotate before jumping, you can simply declare the sequence, append each twin, and they will execute one after the other. You can even add a callback when a twin or sequence is completed. This is very cool, but if for some reason you need to do some logic in a coroutine, simply add a wait for completion yield instruction at the end, and then yield return in front of the twin. Let's not forget our debug log, and let's try it out. If you find sequences confusing, you can always wait for each twin separately, which can sometimes help with readability. DoTwin overall is very flexible, and there is even a free version. One advantage of the paid version is that you can attach DoTwin components to objects if you don't want to write code for simple twins. For example, I have the banana mesh rotating over time. This is done using a DoTwin animation component. The type is set to rotate, the duration to 3 seconds, and the mode to fast beyond 360. I can even test this in the editor to tweak it until I like it. Another free option is PrimeTwin which is similar to DoTwin and has apparently better performances. I have not tried it myself, but I'm sure it's great. Alright, at number 2 we have SOAP. SOAP might look like a complicated tool at first, but it's actually very easy to use and it will help you build your game in a decoupled manner. This is great for enabling code reusability and preventing bugs. Let me show you a simple example. Let's add a score to our game. When a banana is destroyed, we will simply increase the score by 1 and display it in a UI text. Of course, we could put the score variable in a singleton called Game Manager, but I don't really want the banana or the UI to be coupled with this Game Manager. I just need an int representing the score. This is where SOAP scriptable variables come in handy. Let's select the banana prefab and open its script. Let's declare an int variable and call it score. Now, when a banana is destroyed, we will simply add 1 to the score. Done. In the editor, we can click on create to create and reference that variable. Now for the text, you might have noticed that the UI canvas is in a different scene. Well, that's not a problem with SOAP. Let's select our text, then attach a component called bind to text mesh pro. Now we can bind this to the score variable and add a prefix like score. Alright, that's everything we need. Let's play and see if it works. Yeah, it works nicely. If we want to save the score for any reason, we can simply click save on the variable and that will save the value to player pref. No need to write any extra code. You can also enable debugging to see when the value changes. There are many features and aspects of SOAP like scriptable events and lists, but I suggest you watch some of the videos on my channel to learn more about those. Alright, moving on to number 3, Odin Inspector. Odin is a tool that makes it very easy to customize the editor without needing to create your own custom inspectors. My favorite attribute is the button attribute. Simply add it above any method, it can even be private, and the method will be visible in the inspector. You can even change the arguments before invoking it. This is extremely useful and simple. Another attribute I use a lot is the inline editor, which allows you to display the content of a class with a foldout in the component. This is incredibly useful for quickly editing scriptable objects or structs. There is also the show in inspector attribute to display properties, the color palette attribute to display color palette and to select color that match together, and finally, Odin's makes it very easy to serialize dictionaries so they can be drawn in the inspector. Of course, there are so many more attributes and features, and you can easily read about them in the editor itself. 
simply go to Tools, Odin, Odin Attributes, and enjoy their outstanding interactive documentation. All right, let's talk about number four, Procedural UI Image. This one is not very famous, but incredibly useful. It enables you to create simple UI elements without needing any sprites. Just add a procedural image to a game object, select the type of roundness and tweak it. That's it. You can easily make borders and create simple flat UI elements without using a single sprite. And last but not least, SR Debugger. This tool is an essential debugging tool that works in both the editor and builds. The main feature I use from this tool is the cheats option. This is where I add all my debug and cheat commands. For example, I have two commands here, one for increasing the score and another to destroy all the bananas. Now, when I play the game, if I am in the editor, I can open the SR option menu and directly call any of these debugs method. But these methods can also be accessed in the game itself and in builds. I can double click on the top right corner and this menu appears. This works across all platforms, so it's great for mobile. I can see a bunch of information, including the console logs and the cheat menu. I can call any methods to help me test my game. Finally, I can also take a peek at performance metrics. Now, each of these assets is super useful on its own, but let me show you how you can combine them to accomplish very cool synergies. To showcase this, I made the level complete UI menu. It uses procedural UI image for the images, soaps, variables, and binding to display or hide the menu based on the score count and a max score. It also uses two do tweet animation, one to make the background fade to black, and another to create a scale up animation when the menu is displayed. Now, if we play the game, we can use SR Debugger to destroy all the banana and instantly win the level. This menu was made without a single line of code and in less than two minutes. Because it does not have any dependency on the game's code, I can even reuse it in many other games. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you want to purchase any of these assets, you can find all the links in the description. See you next time!